Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to what promises to potentially be a very exciting episode of the F124 driver career. If you missed the last episode, A, go and watch it, you'll enjoy it. B, uh, there was a bit of a revelation at the end. Things have taken a turn, at least on paper, in between the last race and this. A D? Um, we're now second on the performance index, right behind Haas. Yeah, that happened. Like that, for both of us. Ourselves even more so. We had a number of parts pass. I've nothing in the development at the moment, because I haven't got enough resource points. I will do after the first practice sessions here. Uh, but Charles has a chassis part and a, uh, a powertrain part, both of which are major to, uh, to pass very soon, and the minor uh, durability one too. It's slightly misleading still, though. Our durability is fourth, but that's fine. Our powertrain is the second best, right behind Haas, who have a Ferrari powertrain. Our chassis is supposedly the best on the grid, but with a lot of uh, scope for improvement yet further still. And our aero is still seventh. So we're still probably going to have to run a little bit more downforce. You can see just quite how significantly behind Red Bull, Aston Martin and Mercedes it is. And how significantly ahead of Williams, actually. But Red Bull and Aston Martin in particular, their aero departments are significantly better than ours. And I can only upgrade it a little bit further without dramatically improving my recognition. Which ain't happening anytime soon against Charles Leclerc. So we are going to have to put up with a poor aero performance from the car for... Probably the rest of our time at Ferrari. However, the chassis and powertrain are going to be on point, supposedly. So there is the potential to challenge for a podium here today. Whether that potential manifests itself in actually happening or not, we shall wait and see. We don't know whether, even though Haas are top of the powertrain, or top of the, uh, the performance index, we saw last season that... That was slightly elevated for Haas as well, and actually the chassis and the aero department weren't quite so high up on their chart as well. So it may still be Red Bull and Aston Martin that are the, the two cars to beat, but we hopefully will be in amongst that mix now. So Charles should hopefully be getting some very, very good results and or victories quite regularly now for the rest of the Hello, season. Ferrari are about to bounce to back. Canada. Mixed conditions for the Grand Prix, but it is dry for every other session. So I'm going to go and get my resource okay, points, hopefully qualify well, and then from there, have a bloody good race. That's the plan anyway. Things, okay? Drop the video a like, subscribe to the channel, come and join me on Twitch, and I'll see you after practice. We just had a really solid practice session. Like a genuinely, like, oh. That was good, practice session. If we can follow it up with a, oh, that was good, qualifying session, then there may well be something special on the cards here for us in the Grand Prix at 105 difficulty. Let me just throw the uh, better components in, the least worn components, and pray that they don't die on me at some point throughout the course of this weekend, needing a brand new turbo for this uh, for this particular round of the championship in the sessions that matter. Fully dry quality. I don't yet know where the weather is in the race. It is mixed conditions, but where the mixed condition is in the balance of the whole 70 laps, I don't Welcome yet back, know. Everybody. We will find out in due course, but right now we're gonna try and get ourselves through to Q3 and I won't go too far yet, but I have a I have a line in my head that I might like to say a little bit later on. Even my teammates come out again. That says to me that if Charles isn't confident that he's safe when he's P1, then it was definitely the right idea to come out again. Our fastest lap was a 1 minute 9... I'll let Charles go. Fastest lap was a 1 minute 9.2. It was a 1, 1 minute 9.2. Was it a late 1 minute 9.1? Let's have a look. Uh, late 1 minute 9.1. Some are going out on their third set using Lance is on a third set, Lewis is on a third set, Oscar on a third set. That's very peculiar. Using a lot of tyres here in this session, some of the drivers. But so competitive is it, it seems, at such a short track. 
a lot of which that's spent at full throttle, that they feel the need to burn through those tyres to guarantee getting through. Well, tyres definitely isn't the one. Oh my god, Fernando's improved by half a second. I should have put a new set on. We did not anticipate this much of a ramp up in track conditions. I'm 15th now. As it stands, we are through by the skin of our teeth. But it is only by the skin of our teeth. Now we're 16th. I'm officially out of qualifying as it stands. We're out of qualifying. I should have put a new set on. The track... The track ramped up... by... five or six tenths. We could not have anticipated that. We, the the spread of the field so tight. Wow. I mean, by five milliseconds, by just five milliseconds, we're out. Lewis was very, very nearly suffering the same fate as me as well. Lewis gets lucky. I do not. But having made a mistake on my first run and still only been two tenths off P1... And even, even on that first original time, being now seven tenths off P1, I can't believe there was so much time in that in that second run for everyone else. We we pointed out that some were going on their third set of tyres, and you've seen exactly why they felt the need to do that. That's insane. Well, we know we've got a hell of a lot of pace in the car, but we're going to have to come from a long way back if we're to get a good result here in the race. So the weather for the race is as you see it above me. Dry, then wet, then dry again. But notice that those clouds, whilst there's a high percentage, there's not much rain coming from those clouds. It is seemingly a bit more of a prolonged spell than just the one segment. So it might rain enough for intermediate tyres and long enough for intermediate tyres, but there may well, there may well not be enough wet weather to warrant a switch from dry tyres to intermediates. It might not be worth the extra two stops off the dry tyre and off the intermediate tyre to come back to dries later. It might be a case of tiptoeing through the inclement weather to try and manage to lose the least amount of race time possible. It's not a long pit stop loss here, I don't believe. Less than 20 seconds, perhaps. So, strategy is going to be crucial here. It was already going to be crucial before that qualifying session. And we absolutely would have made it through comfortably if I'd have just run a fresh set of tyres in the second run. We felt with a mistake we made. A fantastic effort. Wow, 117-1. And it's put him on pole. Well, exactly Ending the same Lando time. Norris Lando Norris did a 117 161 as well. It's just that Charles will have set that have time first. Verstappen. And Verstappen was one millisecond Hamilton. slower. Perez. The top three Sainz. split by Magnuson. one millisecond. Gasly. Hulkenberg. Jesus Christ. Okay. Stroll. And there was definitely rain at the end of the session as well, because they were 117s and we were doing one minute nines early in the session. Alonso with a penalty, I still start 16th. And there's a lot, a lot of pace in the car and a, a lot of time to make up. Now we don't know when that weather is coming. It says there, the forecast is that it's gonna come towards the end of the race, but that very much could come a lot sooner than that. There may well be some on hard tyres here. There are a lot on hard tyres here. Now then, do we feel that those hard tyres will go until the rain? Probably. So do I start on a hard set myself 
and hope to last until the rain? Or do I start on a medium set and try and undercut the others that are on mediums and then go to the hards in the middle stint to then have softs or mediums again at the end of the race to go to? That is the question that is currently in my head. So we would look to do something like this. 22, 26, anticipating at some point going to a wet tire to then back to the mediums after the rain. It's significantly quicker than the projected, but is it significantly quicker enough? We'll go for three laps worth of extra fuel. Medium hard, I think, is probably going to be the way to go. I, mm, yeah, medium hard, I think. And we'll box early, we'll box on like lap 20 and try and take those hards all the way to the rain. Because look at the, the how the, the, the hard tire barely degrades at all. We could actually probably even one stop. If I was to take this stint out entirely, we could probably one stop and not be not be that much slower over the course of a full Grand Prix. We won't do that, but it would be an option to us if the scenario were available. But we will 20... In fact, I'll go... I'll just set the, the strategy as I intend it to be. 20, 30, 20. That's what we're planning on doing. 20, 30, 20. We'll box earlier than those that are also on mediums, so we'll look to undercut Piastri, we'll look to undercut Stroll, Hulkenberg and Gasly, and hope that those hard tyres don't last until the rain. I'll also be undercutting Charles as well. So, oh, although he'll be a long way down the road, but those hard tyres are slow. The mediums were about half a second slower than the soft. The hards were about 1.2 seconds slower than soft, meaning that the hards are about seven tenths a lap slower than the medium. So we should be able to make some positions as well in the meantime. We want to make some positions anyway. The car is quite clearly significantly quick now. I just <sighs> have been a little bit too confident in qualifying and it's come back to bite me. But will it bite me twice or can we recover in the race? We shall find out now. Right, after a fr frustratingly poor qualifying, but that's probably my fault for not choosing the right tyre strategy. Superb but there, Fernando Alonso and Oscar Piastri are back here with me, so we are hopefully surrounded by cars that we could go with through the field. Especially considering we're on a softer compound. It's not going to be much of a run to the first corner, so you're going to have to be really, really careful here not to pick up any damage. It's really, really particularly quite slow in these opening stages of the Canadian Grand Prix. If you could not turn into me there, Mr. Ricardo, that would be great. Sunoda's through as well. Okay, fine. Kind of bullied their way there. I had to get out the throttle to not get nailed by Daniel Ricardo. As a result, they just got past me, so hello. Consider the favour returned. Could have gotten rather rude on the uh, apex there. I didn't. Right. Back where we were. We go again. A little concertina up through the hairpin as well here. So we, if we were closer, we could have made some positions, but we're not close enough to do so. A bit of battery to try and stay with, although it seems like they are actually quite tasty in a straight line here, some of the uh, other drivers. They're running considerably lower downforce than we are. Absolutely fine though. We will deal with it. We have the battery to do so. Front right tyre hasn't even gotten to... Uh, hasn't even gotten to 1% yet. We've opened the gap to Ricardo though, so that's fine. Very comfortable behind now. It might actually be a bit of a hindrance initially having Piastri and Alonso in front of us because they're going to have the pace to manage a gap to me if they're not quite so badly held up in front. Daniel Ricciardo is uh, losing quite a bit of time but I'm informed by my chat that my slight contact with him at turn two, lap one, resulted in him losing a bit of front wing. So uh, 
sorry, Daniel, but not sorry, Daniel. You got a bit too aggressive, tried to turn in on me, and, uh, well, you've come off second best. We need to start making some moves, though, please, Fernando and Oscar, if you don't mind. Let's start to get further up the field. Thank you. Uh, Charles is disappearing out front, as you can notice by the minimap. He and Max pulling away from a bit of the uh, pack. Which is really refreshing to see Charles Leclerc turning what was a very strong qualifying performance into what could be a very strong race performance as well. Right. We need to start making some moves, please. The three of us, not just me, but Fernando and Oscar as well. Time to start actually getting up through the pack, please. We're trying, oh, I'm contemplating. Five tenths, I don't know where five tenths is close enough. Yep, I'm having a look. Oscar's gonna leave a bit of a gap because it's a late apex around that hairpin. Nice move. Good Still right here with me. I'm the one in the slipstream at the minute of Fernando Alonso. Now he's gonna be the one in the slipstream, but we are just clear of him. That's Piastri dealt with and he's the medium runner, so in theory, it's gonna be the more difficult to get past. Now, we have some hard runners to attack, so let's get through them, please. I might use all my battery, though. If I could just get past Alonso, the other two, hopefully gonna be a bit more straightforward, so I'll use a lot of battery here. Oh, he's gone defensive, I didn't anticipate it. He moved very late there, Fernando. That was a bit naughty. I used all my battery there to try and close the gap and have a run on him, and just as I went to pull out, he jinxed right very, very late in the day. It's probably just before the braking zone, but only just. A very fine margin there. Fernando taking a few liberties, being a little bit naughty. As Fernando has the uh, trait to do in real life, sometimes he really does push the limits of what is and isn't acceptable with racecraft. Oh, I'm desperate to get past. This is really holding us up. I know it's only lap six of 70. There's a long way to go, but... If he goes defensive again, Fernando, which I think he might do. This time he hasn't. Oh, he did again very, very late. That's so naughty. Like, the brake, you can see where the brake is only because we've got, uh, we got the racing line on. Now, I pull out. I pull out. Showing my hand, and he then reacts late into the braking zone and jinx right himself. We only just narrowly miss the front wing on the back of his car, but we do make the corner. Fernando is being particularly strong in defence, is the word used in, or phrase used in chat. I'd be a, a bit harsh in saying Fernando's being a little bit of a dick, but we are through at least. Right behind Alex Albon here. We'll launch up the inside. I'm not going to be patient with it. It's not Monaco. We're not spending 40 laps behind the car in front to then make the overtake. I need to get past, and I need to get past now, and we have... Okay, expect to see some rain. Oh, wow, okay. That is so much earlier than forecast. 10 to 15 minutes for the rain. Those hard tyre runners aren't going to have to box again. Maybe we should have started on the hards. Esteban, are you going to go defensive? No, he's not as naughty as Fernando. But unluckily for him, he's not as fast as Fernando either. So he's going to go defensive into one. I would just quite simply go all the way around the outside of him and just about manage to keep it on track. Uh, that rain is coming at a really inopportune moment, annoyingly, because the medium tyres might need to come off before the rain hits. Ah, oh, we're going to be in a really precarious position because if the rain doesn't come hard enough to warrant changing tires either, then we're just going to be delaying a pit stop for the sake of waiting to go to intermediate tires that we don't inevitably need to go on to. This is a really tricky scenario now. We needed the rain to come half an hour later than it actually is going to. Unless that's a early, careful, a, not, I nearly re repeated what they were saying in front of me there. Unless it's an early call that actually isn't quite as accurate. Carlos Sainz is out. His engine's let go. You saw him there at the back of the uh, hairpin. 
That's the position for us against one of the faster supposed cars on the grid. And we have significantly closed the gap on those in front because they had to get out of the way of the slowing and retiring Carlos Sainz. So whilst the weather might be working against us, other scenarios, other situations, other happenings are potentially working for us. Oh, although, the, oh Christ, these medium tyres are certainly letting me know that they're getting through their wear on the rear tyres. Lap 11 of 70, Pierre Gasly has boxed. So he must have gotten some damage from trying to negate, or negotiate, sorry, negotiate his way around the retiring Haas. So Gasly's in, his race is effectively not ruined, but significantly hampered, and we're now racing inside okay, the points. Lance right, Stroll well, just part over part a second ahead, second. just out of DRS range, but Nico Hulkenberg is going to be, well, you would think, a rather straightforward target for him, and then you can see on the minimap the gap to the pack in front of that, where those faster cars are positioned. It is sizable. I'm not quite going to be within DRS range of those in front, but we are relatively safe to those behind. We should be within the next couple of laps within DRS range of Stroll and Hulkenberg and hopefully past them also. And when you get it done on this occasion, looks like it's Rolls reversed. I thought that maybe we should have a go around the outside of Hulkenberg myself here. Now the Aston Martin should have the pace to just disappear down the road now. Although Nico will have DRS to his advantage, and that might help balance out the performance advantage that Lance has in the faster car. Wanting to make some more time if we can, some more positions. Finding it very difficult to do so. We're making some good time when we've got free air, but then when we get stuck behind some traffic, it's not as straightforward as we might hope to get through. So slow through some of the turns though, but they're so good in the traction zone that it's impossible to build the speed. We're trying to use a lot of battery as Lance has gotten a bit of a gap. Go defensive, go defensive, go defensive, go defensive, go defensive. He didn't on the inside, get the move done. I'll let him have the position back. That wasn't particularly legal. I cut the chicane. Ocon's having a run at me, but he's not going to get through. There's no point waiting for the stewards to give me a five second penalty for leaving the track and gaining an advantage. We'll give the position back to Nico, which inadvertently has actually weakened his position because he's now out of DRS range of Lance Stroll in front. And still 15 minutes till the rain. Now they said ETA 10 to 15 minutes six laps ago. Now they're saying another 15 minutes. Our strategy then remains unchanged. Mediums to the hards on lap 20. Just so you know, we're getting some strange readings and then we think that the hard tyre runners will still be able to make it to the rain, but we should have the pace to close up on them. I don't think boxing for another set of mediums is the play, because the rain could come a bit later on, yet further still. Nico's going to go defensive. To get right on the brakes. Try and get him into one though if we can. With ERS and DRS. No need to worry about Gonna go for the inside line here. Don't even think about it, Nico. I'm having that position, thank you. Eight seconds to get to Kevin Magnuson in a minute. That front group have gotten quite a way down the road, haven't they? Thanks to some slower moving cars in front. Lance clearly showing the pace that he would be with that front group had he been able to find a way past Nico Hulkenberg slightly earlier. The Alpine slowing everybody up. He's now already dropped nearly a full second behind us. I'm trying to catch up with Lance. He might take a couple of laps. No, I am thinking we will still box lap 20 and go on to the hards and try and undercut some of the other medium runners. I think it's only Lance and my teammate in front that are still on the mediums. Indeed it is. So we will look to undercut them both. Charles will be just for time. Lance will be hopefully for position, and then we'll be on a much fresher set of hard tyres than those in front of us, as they will go to the rain on their hards, I'll go to the rain on my hards, but we'll have a 20 lap tyre advantage on those in front of us, which should be just enough, I think, 
to overturn the gap before the rain then falls. No, Nico. Our head's starting to create a gap. They're just starting yes, to Nico, apparently. ERS and DRS clearly working for Nico Hulkenberg in retaliation to me. My rear tyres are starting to have a bit of a wiggle on now, so I'd be sorely tempted to box lap 19 for uh, for hard tyres. And I think I oh, may well do. We're going to... Hard tyres at the end of this lap. Right, well, enough of a gap behind to not need to worry about that. Because they too will be box uh, breaking for the... Uh, for the chicane, and I can go straight on in here to the pits. Okay, right, strategy is at play. Positive or negative, time will tell. Okay, Crucially, go, go, go. a good pit that stop this time. Stop. Faster than we were expecting. Okay, we have a problem with ERS. Oh, are you kidding me? What is it with this Ferrari car and the ERS failing me? I'm not sure if it's fixed again, but I imagine that's me losing a lot of straight line speed just after my pit stop. So one imagines that won't fix itself until I box again. I'm trying to use whatever ERS I can to my advantage here, but I don't know how it's working. The gap to Daniel Ricciardo will tell us whether we are or are not losing a lot of straight line speed, which it seems that we are. Unbelievable. What is the timing? If I'd have just waited two more laps, then that would have... That would have broken itself, and then with a the pit stop, they could have fixed it. Even though it's unrealistic that it would fix with a pit stop when it's a software issue really but that's how the game fixes it i think with a box oh are you kidding me hopefully it's just a, a very very brief failure and we're back in action very soon we just took three tenths out of Teo pocher through there but then he's opening it back up on us down the straights he's not in drs of the car in front so I'm going to use my battery now and see what happens with the gap. If it comes down still or maintains, then the ERS is fixed. Mm, it's not fixed, but it's equally not massively broken. We're still gaining time. Okay. I think we'll be okay. I hope we'll be okay. Let's have a look. Still waiting for them to actually get to the pit lane. They had such advances, those front few. Lance Stroll is in the box. Nick Holkenberg is in the box. We're expecting some rain soon. Expect the first next, few next few minutes. You've gone from 10 to 15 minutes to 15 minutes to now. What? If you'd have said that earlier, I wouldn't have bloody pit, you twat. They have no idea what's going on with the forecast. No idea whatsoever what's going on with the forecast. We are going to undercut Lance Stroll. And Nico Hulkenberg? No, we're not going to undercut Lance Stroll. The loss of the DR... We have undercut... No, Piastri was behind us anyway, wasn't he? That loss of ERS, albeit brief, okay, mate. has cost us the opportunity. Achieve 14th position, currently 16th. We want to achieve 14th by lap... Well, within seven laps, basically. By lap 30-ish. So we may well, we are going to get Nico Hulkenberg here. They've gone to mediums. It's 15. Gasly boxed quite early as well, if you remember, from getting damage off the back of the retiring Haas. So Gasly's going to be at a disadvantage to us here, pace-wise, and we should quite significantly close on him. The clouds, however, are quite significantly closing on everyone at the minute, and those hard-tired runners are going to be able to go all the way to the rain without having to stop. We're on lap 24 of 70, and it said on the forecast that that rain wasn't going to come until the last third of the race. 
which would be lap 50-ish. The rain has come twice as quickly as it was forecast to do, which has thrown our strategy right out the window. It's gonna get through, I think. It's exactly the same movie used on Nico Hulkenberg earlier, and that was Raindrops. The rain is here. Now, what we're actually now hoping is that the rain doesn't fall heavily enough to force intermediate running. Now our strategy will only work in terms of getting us a long way up the field if the rain isn't very heavy and doesn't force intermediate tyres. But already into that last braking zone, I felt quite a bit of instability. But as they say, we're still nowhere near a changeover. I'm going to try and use DRS here on Gasly and ERS to get past him and close with Lance Stroll. Lance on mediums is going to be very hard to stick with. If I can get past Pierre, then we might be able to stick with him. I'm going to go for Pierre into turn one. Try and get a good exit. I'll stay behind. I don't deserve to uh, to take the position by cutting the chicane like that. It's my own detriment, but I shouldn't have shouldn't have cut the chicane. So I would have gained an advantage. It does, however, mean Stroll is gone, and well, the track is getting very slippy. DRS might be disabled very soon. If it is, expect to see a lot of drivers in for intermediate tyres. Oh my god, there's no grip. The intermediate is my next tyre. I don't think it's going to be long. The front runners are in now. And if Charles pits as well, yeah, everybody's boxing. It's intermediate tyre weather now. Going one more lap just isn't the right call. Charles is in for his stop yeah. now. Everyone's going into. Even though DRS is still okay, active. Everyone's going into. Ah, oh, the pit strategy just hasn't worked for us because the rain has come so much earlier than we, than we wanted it to. Damn it! We were making good progress too. In we box for intermediate tires. Ah, oh, balls. And DRS disabled as we cross the line. Now please don't have a slow stop. Thank you. Let me out, let me out, let me out. Oh, you... 5.2 second stop, horrendous. It's so bad. We would have jumped Lance Stroll if they not messed that stop up. Okay, we had an issue attaching the left... Oh, I know you had an issue. Well, let's try and put that behind us now and get back into this race. Pit strategy complete. See these tyres through to the end now. No. It will dry up again before the end of the race. We just have to hope that it dries up far enough that they can't put softs on and they will opt for a brand new set of hards, I think, rather than the mediums they've just run. And obviously those at the front will box for medium tyres because they've run their hards already. So I think any chance of a podium or a top five is probably out the window now, barring a, a safety car. Charles's last lap was half a second quicker than mine. 20.7, I did a 21.2, we just did a 21.6. I suck in the rain. Rephrase. The AI have too good traction in the rain in the traction zones I quite, I'm running more downforce than they are and I quite simply cannot put the power down at all without just spinning up whereas this part especially they just gain two, three, four tenths on me in a straight line even when I'm using battery that went from six tenths to 1.2 that's more than half a second just in that one bit of racetrack just because they can put the power down and for whatever reason you as the user can't it feels slightly unfair, but has Nico gone to the full wet tyre? Yes, he has. 
It seems that the full wets is the play, so I imagine everyone in front of us will make that switch very soon, and we shall probably do the same. Charles is in for his stop now. Everyone's electing to double stack rather than go an extra lap. And that double stack has seen Charles Leclerc jump into P2, just at the line, able to slow it down enough. So Charles is up into P2 now. Now don't fuck this stop up like you did the last one. Thank you. 5.2 turns into 2.5, and we've jumped Lance Stroll and Zhou Guan Yu. We're up to P13. Good. Finally, something in the pits goes my way today. Can I? Do I? Probably, yes. Give Yuki a bit of a squeeze on the apex. The RB dispatched P12. Oh, it's been painful in bringing it about, but at least it has happened. If we could just somehow manage to compete with the front few in these conditions, that would be great. But at the minute, I'm struggling with the midfield to try and dispatch them in these conditions because I can't get the power down, whereas they can. Oh, I'm struggs, chat, I'm struggs, but we are getting there. Points will come today, provided the car doesn't shit out on me and something breaks on it. But how many remains to be seen. We're now catching the RB in P... Oh, no, never mind. That's Ricardo a lap down. Oh, dear, Daniel, your race is... We thought our race hadn't quite gone according to plan. Daniel Ricardo is about to be lapped just over halfway through the race by the top 14 drivers. Oh, Could we maybe sneak if Daniel does it poorly and letting through those in front? No, he's just going to get out of the way here and if anything, I'm going to be the one to lose out on time. Yep, I'm going to be the one to lose out on time. Sick. Oh, he's going to let us through before the hairpin. We haven't really lost anything. Thank you, Daniel. Sorry, mate. Now this feels like Monaco, stuck behind the car for Christ knows how many laps trying to find a way past. Whilst not dying. It's so slow around the hairpin. I've got to run, I've got to run, I've got to run. Going for it. The inside of Gasly. P11. Oh, it's slow progress, but it is progress. Esteban Ocon next in front. Oh, Esteban's locked up. Thank you. Well, if you're just going to hand me it, I will take it gladly. In the points. Although 10 and a half seconds to the car in front and another nine seconds from him to the car in front of him. So 10th might be as far as we get. I hope not, but 10th might be as far as we get. Still saying, well, it looks like it's going to be much lighter okay, the next... question we have to ask now is, with the clearer patch on its way, but far enough out that we're probably not going to get any dry running between now and the end of the race, with a racing line clearing as much as it is, do we feel like, A, is it gonna switch to intermediate tires before the end? 
and B, if we feel it is, do we preempt that and try and go two or three laps early and pray that we're quick enough? Because the racing line is getting bigger and bigger here. The water is being shifted. They say that the rain is okay, drying up soon. Up there. Keep it up. We're looking at about 10 more minutes of rain. 10 minutes. The rain's getting lighter now, but it's going to take a while for the track to dry out. OK, full wet seems to be nope. the fastest tyre for now. I'm entering. I am intermediate. I intermediate-ing. The racing line has just been getting wider and wider and wider. It's a giant gamble, but what have we got to lose other than a single point? So, we might as well. Facing this decision of the fact that A, everyone else is gonna be on really worn wets, and B, that racing line is looking quite sizable at the minute. There's still some standing water, so staying on the racing line is gonna be beneficial to us. We can't really afford to drift off it. But, I feel like there's probably some pace in the car here in differing positions. And then if we do end up going back to dry tires at any point, everyone's gonna have softs to go to, and we will do the same. if we end up drying up enough to go to soft tyres, dry tyres. Not sure yet if we are or aren't on the right tyre, but there doesn't appear to be too much difference in it at the moment. Yes, she's trying to get past Esteban Ocon here and doing an absolutely terrible job of it. I might try to show here. Stop. It's a lunge, but it's a lunge that's worked. That showed when you dealt with. Ocon and Piastri. Well, Ocon got caught on the grass there. You saw the car have a bit of a wiggle. It's going to put him out of position. They're both going to go, well, offensive and defensive at the same time. And unfortunately, they just blocked any avenue I had of taking either of them. This is costing us so much time. If we were perhaps going to be able to undercut Alex Albon when he goes on to intermediate tyres, if indeed they do box again for another set of the lesser intense wet tyre when the track starts to dry up, we need to get past this lot quickly and go with Piastri. I'm going, I'm going for it on Esteban, I feel like I've got the grip. And I do. Excuse me, Esteban, I'm through. Ta, bye. Right, Oscar, come back, please. Take me with you, mate. Whether they go straight from the wet to dries and actually disregard an intermediate stint altogether and we just boxed an extra time for the sake of trying something that ultimately won't work. I've no idea right now. But as the track dries further, on worn wets, surely, on new inters, we will just get quicker and quicker and quicker in comparison. And with 11 laps, 12 including the one we're on to go, can we get back to where we were? I think that's a certain. Can we get back to maybe challenging Alex Albon for a P9? Unsure. They've got to stop soon to change, surely, because this is this is silly. We've got so much extra pace. And so much extra grip. Excuse me, Oscar. Toodaloo. We're so much faster. It's not even a competition now. We've opened up two seconds on Oscar Piastri and McLaren in the space of the lap since we overtook him. We are, without doubt, the fastest man on track right now. But are we fast enough to make up what we lost from the stop? 
They have to break so early for the hair, for the chicane there. Plant's gonna give me any room on the outside? Not much, but they're gonna have to break much earlier than I can, or than I need to. Sorry. I can break much later than they can. That's P12. You can see P10 just down the road in front of us after Tsunoda. So that's where we were in terms of overall race position. In terms of track position, though, we're still quite a way behind where we were because we were closing on us on uh, Alex Album, weren't we? And they're closing up to about five and a half to six seconds. And that gap is still considerably quite sizable. But we're definitely going to get P10. It's just a case of whether we can get P9 or not. I'm just forcing my way past Pierre. He could see where I was. He saw me coming. He did allow me the space, which is very kind of him. But he knew that it was only a matter of time before we got past him. There's barely any water left on the track now. Definitely been intermediate weather conditions for, or intermediate tyre conditions for a considerable period of time now. Our lap times continually are getting faster and faster and faster. There's, I imagine, are getting slower and slower and slower. As even if it were still the old conditions, their, tire, their lap times surely would be getting slower with worn tyres. The fact that it's even coming away from the ideal conditions for the tyres that are on as they were, they should in theory just be getting slower and slower and slower. They're being very stubborn in not making that extra stop to go back to inters now. But I imagine maybe they're just holding out for dry conditions. The gap to Fernando is giant. 32 seconds to Fernando Alonso in P8. He's going over the start finish line now. That's how far ahead he is. So he's opened up the gap even on Alex Albon, let alone the gap that we had previously before we put. Albon, I feel like we could maybe well catch. Obviously, Alonso is going to be an absolute no. And it's now, it's now literally stopped raining. There won't be enough time to try and stop for a dry set of tyres and earn the time back. We now just have to hope that our intermediates last better in dry conditions than their worn wets. A battle of attrition now. So I'm going to drive offline, try and keep the temperatures as cool as I can. But everyone is going to be running on very hot rubber now. But there's just not enough time left in the race to earn back any pit stop time. Oh, if only it had dried up on lap 55 not 65 so the rain stopped when it said it would with a forecast but it arrived 20 laps earlier than it said it would with the forecast and lasted a lot longer than it said it would and rained a lot heavier than it said it would but it was definitely dry weather running again the fact that DRS has been enabled is that sign and my rear tires are now starting to overheat but you imagine theirs are even worse right they have to be surely Surely theirs are even worse. We've got three and a half laps to close 5.5 seconds on Alex Albon for a second point. If I hadn't have balls up qualifying, we may well have been challenging for a much stronger final position. Maybe a top five. Although so slow was I in the wet that Maybe I would have fallen to about where I am now anyway. They're boxing. They are boxing for dry tires. All right. With three laps to go, everyone is starting to box for dry tires. And the plot thickens yet further. But they, some of them don't have soft tires to go to, whereas I do. Oh, slow on the... God damn it, Ferrari, you're so bad! 
they're just so bad. Whether it's reliability on the car, whether it's oh, terrible pit stops. That's two in this one race. We've had countless so far this season already, and it's only round eight of the championship. But now I've lost all my tyre advantage. Oh, God. Now I've lost all my tyre advantage. I'm not going to catch Alex Albon. I don't have that much extra pace on the Williams in these conditions. So it will be P10 for us today. If it had stayed as was and people weren't going to box, I could have made that position up. Because we definitely were gaining. Purple middle sector, but it's just too little, too late. That pit stop cost me... Well, we were almost within five seconds of Alex as we came into the box, so it cost me almost three full seconds. I would have gotten Alex Albon. As we start our final lap then, there is a Mercedes about to win the race. Which I believe is going to be George Russell. Lance Stroll sets the fastest lap as he crosses the line. And there you go. Oh, it's Lewis Hamilton. Lewis wins the Grand Prix here in Canada. Charles will come home in second for a Ferrari podium. And we ask the question, what could have been if I hadn't ballsed up qualifying? We ask the question, what could have been if the weather had done what we were told it was going to? Because we would have not started on the medium tyre if we knew that the rain was going to come inside a hard tyre stint. We ask what would have been if the pit crew hadn't messed up two pit stops. What could have been? There may well have been a race win on the cards for Charles. There may well have been a podium on the cards for me, but it is P10 only in Canada, unfortunately. The car is quick. All right, race over. Take care but of the car on the way in. My miss Cummings as a driver and the team's inability to do a decent pit stop and the fact that the car just breaks all the time. ERS failed again in that race. Oh, eventually everything will fall into well, place for Ferrari, but that eventually is not yet. Sure to join us for more exciting we hope that it will be in the next one. I'm behind Carlos Sainz in the rivalry, but only by three points. I will close on him in this particular race Grand Prix weekend because he retired. But unfortunately, I don't get close enough still. Strategy analyst. I did perfect a practice program. I perfected two practice programs. Bugged. No wonder that that is still level one and all the others are level three. It's just not registering when you actually do it. Cheers game. That's why we're not getting our resource points as quickly as we would like to. That's why we're not able to upgrade the car as quickly as we might like to. That's why the Ferrari is a shitter. Was a shitter. It's not a shitter anymore. We have ourselves... If you have a new rival. Oh, I got a new rival. perfect opportunity yeah. to show the world why you belong in this sport. I already know why I belong in this sport. You Thank you very much. My very exclusive clientele. <laughs> Just kidding, I love working with you. <laughs> You're so funny. You've not used that exact line on me three times before. Shut your face. So up next is Spain, where last season we had a not great finishing position. But then, post-Spain, was when our really strong results kicked in. So we might be about to start really making inroads on those above us. Charles is up to second in the driver's standings, ahead of George and ahead of Fernando now. We are still fourth in the constructors, but closing in on Aston Martin. Charles will try and finish ahead of Fernando Alonso each race. I will try and finish ahead of Lance Stroll each race, and hopefully between us we can close on Aston Martin. Charles definitely stands a chance of beating one or both Mercedes each round. I just need to try and help out, but hopefully with a non-bodged qualifying, we will be able to do that. So I now want to start improving the car again, please. So drag reduction is going to be very important. 30% chance of failure, though, and it's not going to be ready until at least Hungary in four Grand Prix's time. But the aero is the place to 
upgrade now. And really the only place of any real worth. Tire wear, it's not going to make any difference for us. Weight redistribution could help with the balance of the car. Powertrain we will look to do as well. Engine power could certainly come in handy with regards to our poor straight line speed because we're having to run extra downforce. And the drag reduction will help with that as well. Ah! Another failure from the Ferrari... Two further failures from the Ferrari factory. This is the most Ferrari save you've ever seen, isn't it? They cannot get anything right. We're now the third fastest team as McLaren have caught up. We shall advance to the race in Spain. We pray again that there's no bloody rain. The rain in Spain falls hopefully not on us. It's not thoughts of Ferrari, it's thoughts of failure, as Sokmas says in chat. But... It is fully dry in Spain at least. Thank Christ for that. So we will go again in Espana. And what? Do I have enough resource points to, to redo something that previously failed? No on that front. Yes on that front. That will pass in time for Great Britain. So we'll get that done. We should be able to redo the weight redistribution after practice here in Spain as well. And I'm not going to be able to upgrade the... Uh, the aero department until at least Hungary anyway, so we'll do what we can with our resource points, we'll do what we can in Spain. The AI tend to be strong in Spain, but not as strong as they have been in previous years. We didn't make the most of a particularly competitive Ferrari package today, but next time we will. Right? We have to. Next time we have to. Thank you very much for watching today. Join me in the next one. Come and join me on stream to see every lap of every session and hopefully things will start going well for us at Ferrari, which they have not yet so far. Thoughts of Ferrari, not thoughts of failure moving forward, please. I'll see you next time.